Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to your C Sharp tutorial series. Today we're gonna dive a little bit more into variables and how to work with them. Once again, this series is sponsored by Monday.com. Monday.com is a project management system that lets you keep track of your work, what stages it's in, and help you get work done by marking things as done as you go along. This is a great tool if you need help organizing or if you need to make sure you're working on content that actually matters for the project. Check out Monday.com. It's one of the most intuitive, beautiful user interfaces when it comes to project management, so it's a lot of fun to work with. Helps you get stuff done, and it's really great. So I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Check them out, that would really help me out. And now let's get back into variables. So this video is gonna be pretty simple, basically because we've talked about variables already, but I just wanted to go in a little bit more to make sure you understand what they are and their purpose. So this is the video dedicated to that topic. So what is a variable? A variable stores some value. So I'm just gonna start some vocabulary down here for this video. So a variable stores some value. So for example, we can go up here, and in fact, we used a variable here. We created a variable named name and stored it to whatever we type in to the console. So that's an example of a variable. Here's another example. We could say something like int x and set that equal to five. So now we're creating a variable of type int, an integer, and giving it the name x. When we give something a name, the, and this is kind of confusing, but the name for the name is the identifier. So yeah, that made no sense. Basically, this is known as an identifier. <laughs> so the identifier of this variable is X. The name of this variable is X. So it's what we call the variable. Basically just programming terms for the name. So what I wanted to talk about now are some rules for identifiers. The first thing is that we can't start with a number. So if I did something like int 5x, this is not gonna work. Even if I try assigning a value to it, you can see it gives me an error. I don't know if we've talked about this, but C-sharp is a compiled language, and what that means is that the code here will be compiled, or you can think of it as transformed, to a new form, another language that's gonna be used by the .NET framework. So we code in C-sharp, it's then compiled to this intermediate language, and that's used by the .NET framework. Anyways, my point is, because this is a compiled language, we'll be able to see errors here before we even run the code. Because of that, we'll get errors when we try to compile our code. So if I save this and do .NET run, we're trying to compile right now, and what happens is we get errors. So it's not even going to let us execute our code because of these errors. So you can see the build failed. That's just kind of a side note, just wanted to throw that out there. One of the issues with compiling is you can't have numbers before a variable name. So that's one rule. You can start it with an underscore, that's okay, and you can have numbers throughout it, so you could do that, that's legal. But the main thing is don't start with numbers. Now there are some conventions. A convention, again, is just a common way of doing things. So for example, it's often started with a lowercase letter. You could use an uppercase letter. So I could say int x is equal to 50. These are two different variables. One is lowercase and the other is uppercase. So C sharp is case sensitive, meaning the casing of your identifiers is important. Moving on to types, every variable has a data type. In this case, we're using int. In this case, we're using string. We can use the keyword var, so I can say var y is equal to hello, like so. This doesn't make it dynamically typed, it's still statically typed. It just infers what type to use based on what we're assigning to it. So you can see right now this variable y is going to be a string, but if I change this to the number five, for example, you can see it's now an integer. The main benefit of variables is that we can use them throughout our program without having to retype the value over and over and over again. So to see this, let's simplify our code just a bit. Let's say we wanted to print the value five, five times. Well, what we could do is we could put that value here and we could put that five times. And this works, but then if we wanted to change it to six, we would have to go and change every single one of these. Variables fix this problem because we can replace the number five with the variable and anytime we use the variable, it's as if we're using the value five. So now, if we wanted to change the value to six, we only have to change it in one location. That is the main benefit of variables. It's a way to store a value and then reference it later in your code. Variables can also be used inside of an expression. So just for another term, an expression evaluates to a value. So for example, let's say this is our name. We'll just make it Caleb for right now and then we'll change that to a string. We can put that in here and we can print that name, but we can also use the plus symbol and put another string. So this is an example of an expression. This entire thing is going to get evaluated to one value. It's going to be a larger string. To see that when we do .NET run, you can see it says Caleb is weird. 
So this is what it evaluated to. So that's pretty cool. It can make making expressions easier. Now this plus symbol here, this is known as an operator. It allows us to do concatenation in this example. Concatenation is just when we combine strings. So what exactly is an operator? Well, it works on things known as operands. So this is an example of an operand, and this is an example of an operand. And all it does is combine them, it concatenates them. So that's another word you should know. <laughs> you probably figure out pretty quickly that most of computer science is just vocabulary, and it just takes time to pick up on those. So if you really wanna step up your game and get caught up with all this stuff, learn the vocabulary. It's important to speak the right language. So these are the things that the operator works on. So basically what happens is we combine operands with operators inside of a giant expression and it evaluates to a single value which is then passed to this right line method. So to go through that one more time, this is going to evaluate to Caleb, that's concatenated with is weird, and then that produces an entire string which is Caleb is weird, which is right down here, and it's passed to right line which puts it out on the console. So going through that process helps us understand a little bit more of the value of variables. It allows us to make our program a little bit more general, meaning we can change values and the reference is going to change throughout the code. We could get the value of X from input, all kinds of different things. By doing this, we're making our code not just useful for one individual case doing the same thing every time. We're making it more dynamic and more useful. So hopefully this helps you guys understand variables a little bit more. One other thing I wanted to mention to you guys before we go is just another vocabulary, and that is literal. So when we put a value like this, just a literal value, you can think of it that way. This is known as a literal. This is different than a variable such as x. So this is a literal, this is a variable. So I'll just add that to our vocab list. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully that helped you understand variables a little bit better. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel if this content has been helpful for you. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it, guys. Well, stay chill. I'll see you guys in the next video.